I am thrilled to work on today's state because it's gonna smell so good. Welcome back to the United States of Trees, volume two. If you're new here, last year I had a series in which I made a map of the US out of wood from each state's official state tree. And since almost half of the states in the country copied their state tree from another one, I'm making a new map out of 50 totally different and unique trees to show you there's a lot more cool stuff in your neck of the woods than you realize. And up to date, it's the great commonwealth of Virginia, which on the official state tree map was made out of a piece of flowering dogwood, a state tree that was also shared by Missouri. This time, I'm making out of a piece of wood from a tree that's famous for packing an aromatic punch, the Eastern Red Cedar, Juniperus virginiana. The most widespread conifer in Eastern North America, the Eastern Red Cedar ranges from a mere shrub-like bush in poor soil conditions all the way up to specimens of 90 feet tall with trunk diameters reaching nearly 70 inches. Other helpful identifiers include their scaly needle-like leaves, reddish-brown fibrous bark that peels off in narrow strips, and their berry-like cones, which you probably know as juniper berries. That's right, as a conifer, these are cones in the same way a pine or spruce cone is. Is. Eastern red cedar cones are a dark purple blue, typically covered with a whitish waxy coat. They're about an eighth to a quarter inch long and grow in large clusters. Now, if you've caught every episode of this new map, you might recall that Washington was also made out of a piece of wood from a red cedar, namely the Western red cedar. And well, here's where tree names can start to get confusing. Like the Western red cedar and any other native North American cedar, it's not a true cedar at all. Those are all members of the Cedrus genus, which are part of the pine family and are native to the Mediterranean and Himalayan regions. Whereas all of our native cedars here in North America belong to the Cypress family. To make matters even more confusing, the eastern red cedar is part of the juniper family and is more closely related to trees like the common juniper or the Rocky Mountain juniper than it is the western red cedar, which is part of the Thuya genus, and is thus more closely related to trees like the eastern white cedar. Are you confused yet? Yeah, I don't blame you. A lot of North America's tree names are the result of colonizers encountering them and just saying, hey, that kind of looks like that one tree I know from back in Europe. Let's, let's just name it after that one. All right, where were we? Yes, the Eastern Red Cedar. It's considered a pioneer species, which means that it's one of the first types of trees to repopulate a cleared or otherwise disturbed site. Unlike other typical pioneer species though, it's also long lived, recorded as reaching up to over 900 years old. As a result, it's super commonly found in human disturbed sites like old pastures, fence rows, along highways and construction sites. But it's not limited to just those types of sites and is a very hardy tree, it can be found growing in all sorts of types of forests and landscapes. Now, one place you don't want to see this tree growing is next to an apple or crab apple tree, as when they get too close to one another, you get cedar apple rust, a destructive and disfiguring disease to both trees. Last, but perhaps most charmingly, one place you'll often find these trees is growing in rows under power lines. And that's mostly thanks to the cedar waxwing. This bird absolutely loves the tree's berry-like cones and the tree loves the birds right back. See, it takes only about 12 minutes for the seeds to pass through the bird's digestive system. And once it does, its levels of germination is roughly three times higher than an uneaten seed. But it's not just the cedar waxwing who enjoys the flavor of an Eastern red cedar cone. Many other birds and mammals do as well, and yes, that includes us humans. That's just one of the many reasons why this is a tree with deep historical ties to Eastern North America, including Virginia. It has a host of traditional indigenous uses. Its leaves can be used as a tea to relieve coughs, colds, and even canker sores. Again, those berry-like cones are edible and can be used as a flavoring for meat dishes and soups. Also, their waxy coating is a wild yeast and can be used to start fermentation in bread making or beer making. The berries can also be eaten as is and have been safely consumed for generations, though use caution as they are slightly toxic in large amounts. What this tree was and continues to be most renowned for though is its wood. 
Highly aromatic, super rot resistant, and an attractive red color, its traditional and modern uses are as plentiful as they are fascinating. It's highly resistant to decay even when in contact with soil, which makes it a favorite for fence posts in the region. Many Native American tribes have historically used poles of the wood to demarcate agreed tribal hunting territories. A particularly interesting use of eastern red cedar posts includes the Cahokia Woodhenge, a series of large timber circles built by the Middle Mississippi. Mississippian people as part of a city that was larger than London at the same time, these large rot-resistant poles allowed for long-standing solar calendars capable of marking equinox and solstice sunrises for the timing of agricultural cycles and religious observances. I know I keep bringing it up, but it does bear repeating the wood of the eastern red cedar is highly aromatic. It's that spicy, woody smell you almost certainly think of when someone says cedar wood. And it offers more than just a pleasant scent, it also repels moths, making the wood highly popular for lining closets and clothing chests, particularly the once popular hope chest, a piece of furniture described as being traditionally given to young women to collect and store items like clothing and household linen in anticipation of married life. Eastern red cedar wood being important to protect those items long term from moth infestation. The wood is also favored for making furniture, small carvings, birdhouses, and pencils. And interestingly, it's a preferred option for making recorders if not using hardwood or plastic thanks to its rot resistance, good moisture absorption, and low expansion when wet. So yeah, I guess this is one of the trees you can thank next time you have a flashback to hot cross buns. On that note, we're just about done here. This wood looks just as good as it smells. You, you really can't beat that deep red color, this fun mix of maroon, purple, red, pale sap wood in there. Big thanks again to Candler Caldwell for sending some of this wood to me. And I gotta say, Virginia, you are looking awesome up there on the board. I am loving how this map is coming together. So let me know in the comments, which tree's wood do you think smells the best? And as always, what piece do you wanna see next?